people think that the book of Genesis, the first book in the Bible, is the oldest book in the Bible, but it's not. The book of Genesis was compiled from various sources around 1500 BCE. That was around the time the King David lived. This first book of the Bible wasn't the oldest book. Instead, the oldest book in the Bible was written about 500 years earlier, and that's the book of Job. This is going to be important as I talk about my topic today and pronouns for God. As I do, I want you to subscribe to this channel and click that bell so you're notified of future videos. So the book of Genesis begins with the words, in the beginning, God created. Now, in the Hebrew scriptures, the part of the Bible that Christians refer to as the Old Testament, in the Hebrew scriptures, there are many different words or several different words used for God. In the beginning of the book of Genesis, in the beginning, God created. The word God is Elohim. Elohim is an interesting word. It's plural. It's the plural of Eloah. Eloah means the God. Elohim means the gods. But we translate it into English as God. It's a very curious thing, especially when you think about Judaism in 1500 BCE, because by that time, there was already an understanding in Judaism that God was one and there was one God. So that within God, there was this internal cohesion. There was a oneness, a unity in God. And that there was just one God, not multiple gods. So it's interesting that the first book of the Bible begins, in the beginning, the gods created, Elohim created. So what does that mean? When we think about that and we look at our English translations and see that we're always translating God as he, do we have the right pronouns? He would be right for the singular, Eloah, but is it right for Elohim? Isn't Elohim suggesting pronouns they and them? Why would that be? What's that about? And, you know, this becomes even more curious when we move into the Christian era. And within the Christian era, the doctrine of the Trinity evolves. Now, the doctrine of the Trinity wasn't around at the time of Jesus. It's something that evolved over a couple hundred years. The first person to use the term Trinity that we can identify was Theophilus of Antioch. And that was around 170 in the Common Era. And it took until 381 in the Common Era, at the first Council of Constantinople, for this doctrine of the Trinity to be approved. See, before that, in the first 400 years of the Christian era, people believed different things about God, that there was God, a creator, that Jesus, well, it wasn't clear who Jesus was other than the Christ, the anointed, and it wasn't clear what to do with this entity, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And it took until 381 for that to be codified. But now we have hundreds of years of rumination on the Trinity. And it's interesting to me that we commonly refer to the Trinity, whom we traditionally refer to as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as He. Mystics have referred to the Trinity as she, so do feminist theologians. But are the proper pronouns really they and them? I mean, after all, the Trinity is three persons in one, three entities in one identity. Wow, that sounds like a they to me. What's even more curious about this all is that people don't know this. People within Judaism and in Christianity don't understand this basic stuff that's prominent within their religion. 
Instead, there's a strong blowback against the idea of using pronouns like they and them for an individual or for dealing with a trans identity. And I think that part of that is because, well, at least for Christians, most Christians don't actually read the Bible. They may be able to quote some verses, but they don't really read the text or they pick out what they want to prove their point without looking at the larger story. And I'm going to use an example of how that happens from a prominent Baptist minister, a conservative evangelical Baptist minister, who is the editor of the magazine Christianity Today. His name is Russell Moore. And Russell Moore has said frequently, publicly, that the problem with conservative Christianity in America is that they don't want to focus on the real teaching of Jesus. And this is particularly true in Christian nationalism. They skip over things like the Sermon on the Mount because it makes Jesus seem weak, because it makes Jesus look like he's, he favors the poor. And guess what he does? And it's not the victorious Jesus that they want, the strong Jesus that comes in with guns blazing. And they don't recognize that Jesus and Jesus' teaching are nonviolent. I mean, after all, Jesus said to Peter, put away the sword. Those who live by the sword die by the sword. So if conservative Christians are so willing to set aside the teachings of Jesus for their political agenda and try to recreate the religion, what chance does anyone have that Christians are going to dig in and honestly look at scripture and their tradition and come to a different understanding. You know, if religion does anything for us, it should give us a larger context. It should challenge our thinking. It should help us get beyond our biases. And I think if we look honestly at the reality that within the Judeo-Christian tradition, the person of God is understood really as a they. And if we understand that, then how we look at trans issues really begins to evolve. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, like the video, share it with others, and especially on this one, leave me some thoughts and comments. I want to hear from you. And I appreciate the time you spend with Spirituality Beyond Borders. Have a really great day.